Hey everyone, this is Self Made Millennial. I'm Madeline Mann. Today I'm going to teach you a strategy on how to stand out in an on site interview. This strategy can be such a huge help to people who don't have a lot of experience in the field they're going into. It'll really help you compete against people who are more experienced. And those of you who are experienced, this is going to give you a big edge against a lot of the other candidates. What this is all going to be about is a strategy that almost no one does. And it's all about this, a BAMF binder. I call this my BAMF binder, and I've been making them every time I'm on the job market. I didn't think it was anything special, but now that I'm on the other side of the interview table, I realize that almost no one does this. And when they do, it is hugely impactful. I'm gonna show you exactly how to put a BAMF binder together in this video. What's tough is that generally, the professions that do create portfolios are more visual professions, like a photographer or a designer. Not all of us have visual jobs, so we're gonna have to get a little bit more creative at showing visually what we do, but it's a lot easier than you think. This is basically a sweet catalog that they get to flip through to see what it would be like to work with you. So what to include in your BAM finder? The first thing you can do is include academic items. This can be a powerful way to overcome the no experience paradox, where you need experience to get experience. Most of you from attending these universities and programs actually have experience, but it's not the experience in the traditional sense. It's more project-based or you headed up certain events. And those things can be extremely impactful as long as people fully understand the context. And then the more years you're out of school, you can start to leave off this section. What to include in your academic section? Throw in your college transcripts, but only if you're proud of them. Include copies and images of awards you've gotten and even write a little description under each one. Include summaries and slides from your favorite projects. Possibly you competed in some competitions. So include photos of you at that competition as well as any information about where you placed in it. Include papers you've written and then include any other visuals such as photo as you president of an organization on campus or a screenshot of where you were quoted in an article for the campus newspaper. So second, you'll also wanna make sure you obviously have your professional items in there as well. First thing I would do is put your resume in there. Include printouts of any articles or blog posts you've written about the industry. Include any certificates of trainings you've done. Think about what you've done professionally and how do you present that visually. I think the most powerful thing you can do is try to put things that you've accomplished into graphs. People love graphs. This is a pie chart describing my favorite bars. And this is a bar graph describing my favorite pies. Maybe you work in customer service and over the course of the last year you've been at your job, your number of people who you've helped each week has escalated. Or if you're someone who handles a bunch of schedules and coordinating, you could have a graph of how many inquiries are coming to you and how many things you're scheduling a day. The sheer volume of that could be very impressive, especially when shown visually in numbers. Also include presentation slides that you've done professionally and include summaries about how the presentation went and what were the results of it. This is truly an exercise in creativity of thinking how you can capture what you do in your job and put it visually in a book and I really challenge you to do that. Third thing to include in the BAMF binder are some personal items. Include flyers of events that you put on or spoke at. Include anywhere that you appeared online, like on the news or in an article. Simply being out in the world and doing things and being known is attractive to an employer. If you have an online presence where you have a following and it might not be related to your industry or line of work, but showing those numbers of followers and your analytics of some of your pages. A few bonus things you can even add is maybe a list of your role models. This is not something that you are gonna go down the list and explain to someone who is interviewing you, but you know, if you just write you know, a few role models on there and the interviewer's flipping through your binder and they see that you're, you love Michelle Kwan and 
they also love figure skating and then you to bond over what hard work it is to you know become a figure skater and suddenly they're in love with you and really have no doubt in your work ethic stuff like that happens so just throw the kind of information in there and you never know where you might strike a human bond and then finally you could also include a list of your favorite books so now you have an idea about what could go in the BAM binder let's talk about creating it Here are a few different strategies on how to think about the best way to create it for you. One way to go about it is to look at your resume, and on your resume hopefully you have listed under each job your key achievements, and look at those achievements and think about how can I present each one of those bullet points in a visual way. Another way to think about it is think about your strengths. One strength you might feel is one of your strongest suits is that you are highly organized. So possibly you find your most amazing organized spreadsheet. It's color coded. Showing that amazing research you did and having it so organized, that would really show that you are highly organized and get that through to the interviewer. When creating visuals about projects or initiatives you did, take on the PAR approach. PAR stands for Problem Action Result. So when you're creating these visuals, instead of putting an entire presentation or study that you did, you could break it down into the problem, the action, and then the result. Here's an example of a PAR I did. This is for a training facilitation I put on. So I started with a summary about why the training was needed, action I took, so how I put the training program together. And in this page, I have the results. So I did a follow-up survey, which include both quantitative and qualitative data, and I included both. I included some percents, as well as some quotes from people who did the actual training. And then a quick summary of why it was impactful. Another tip on creating this binder is make it look nice. Originally, when I started making visual tools like this, I had it all on a folder and it was kind of all loose leaf and I would pull it out and it was pages were folded. But it's an extra time to make sure it looks nice and neat and professional. Another thing that I've seen people do is put their BAMF binder in a digital version on their website. Though, even if you've put this online on a website, I still think you should bring in something physical when you come in for the interview. But if you have your heart set on being digital, then I recommend having a tablet where there's a presentation or a series of PDFs where they can quickly flip through it as if it was a binder. So this final section is about using the BAMF binder. This is where it comes to life. There are a few key rules about using your binder in an interview. I would recommend that you only show your binder in person. I don't believe that you should drop off the binder at a hiring manager's desk or that you should send a ton of PDFs attached to an email and expect someone to read all of it. This binder doesn't really come to life usually unless you're there telling the story with it. The way I use my BAMF binder in interviews is bring it in with me to the interview and I'll have my resume out and I'll set the binder and the resume on the table in front of me. I'll hand my resume to the person who's interviewing me and then I won't open the binder until they ask a question where I will want to reference the binder. They might ask me, what was a challenge that you faced and how did you overcome it? And I might start to tell a story about a project I worked on and do the whole PAR, problem action result. And while I'm telling that story, I'll be flipping through my binder and saying, well, so this is the where it started, and then walking them through the presentation I did. And so it's a tool to help me tell the story. And then once I've started telling a story about something in my binder, they might be interested to see it themselves, and so they might ask to look through it, or I'll start flipping through and showing them other things. In some interviews, the binder stays closed the whole time and that is okay. I just wanna make sure that you all aren't walking into interviews with a rehearsed speech of how you walk through each page of your binder uh, because that just won't come off as authentic. It will be too forced and you really want the interview to take itself where it may and have the binder be this amazing tool that will help you at certain points. So this is my BAMF binder. Um, it's quite a few years old. 
Uh, but I'll show you a few things that I put in it to give you maybe some inspiration. On these following pages, I wanted to emphasize how I'm great at building processes. These are a bunch of guides, a guide to hiring, uh, a training curriculum I built, a guide to becoming a manager. I didn't want to put all these guides in this binder because no one would want to go through and read it, but you can kind of see from these images, you can get a glimpse of the kind of things I was putting in this guide. I was trying to send the signal that I am really great at taking something ambiguous and putting structure around it. Here's an example of some graphs I put. People loved looking at this page. The, the numbers really kind of drew them in. There's nothing in this page that's like super amazing statistics, um, but it kind of painted a picture of the population I was working with some of the results of some of the projects I worked on, and it just gave like a good visual summary. This is my master's thesis. I just popped the whole 40 page thing in here. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that. I should have done like a quick summary page right here. Here's another PAR type visual I included. This one was done in a before and after format. I talked about how I gathered lots of data, synthesized it, decided to make different changes, and the results of those changes. Thus, the before and after style. So those are all the tips I have for you today. I really hope that you all decide to make your own BAMF binders. I'm serious, it really is a game changer if done well. If you already do this, then you need to get in the comments and give more recommendations and tell people the results that you've seen from this. This is a new channel, so please pop a like on this video. Also, please subscribe. I will have these videos coming at you every single week and I don't want you to miss one. That's all I've got. Thanks and see you next time.